Hi everyone, this is Bonnie at Good Earth Spa. Today I'm going to be making liquid dish soap. This is a soap that I use daily for cleaning my dishes by hand, but this soap is not for the dishwasher. These are my oils. I have organic coconut oil and organic soybean oil. And when I say soybean oil, I mean liquid soybean oil, not shortening. I'm just letting them heat up in the crock pot and I'm going to be getting my other stuff ready here in just a minute. I'm just going to give it a little um, 10 or 20 minutes just to warm up while I get my other stuff uh, measured out and, and all of that. This is my water that I'm going to be mixing lye in while I'm letting my oils heat up. This is a half ounce of my certified organic soap base that I sell on my website. Now you don't need to use this, this is completely optional. But what I do, this will help cut out a lot of your stirring time. Dissolve it in the water before you add your lye solution. So I'm going to let this dissolve and I'm going to let my oils heat up and then I'll get back to this in a little bit. Hi everyone, I'm about ready to mix my lye. But first I just wanted to tell you, I did stir this up a little bit and the soap is not completely dissolved. If you're using it, it doesn't have to be completely dissolved, but it should be really soapy like this is now. So this here is the potassium hydroxide, and you want to go ahead and mix this in. It's, um, you want to have a well-ventilated area as well. I have my windows open, and if you have fans, you could turn those on too. It does make a lot of gases. You don't want to breathe those in. wear a mask too. I'm just kind of staying down low because everything's going to rise up and that's just what I'm going to do. Okay. Now I'm about ready to pour this in. Almost ready. Okay. Now, I'm getting ready to pour it in now. My soapy lye solution. And if you don't have the soap in your life solution, that's okay. But you, by using it, you are cutting out probably a good 15 or 20 minutes of stirring. Now, you have to stir a lot longer for liquid soaps than you do for bar soaps, and that's normal. So I'm just going to get started, and I'll, it's going to go through trays just like a liquid soap or just like a bar soap would, and then it's going to kind of get hard and everything like a hot process bar soap would and then things go a little bit differently after that so I'll bring you back for that stuff. So I'm stirring. When you make liquid soap the oils and lye do want to separate. Because I added in the soap to my lye mixture the separation is not as intense and I'm going to be able to get this stirred up much quicker but if you are experiencing a lot of separation that's normal just keep stirring through it. You may need to be stirring anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes, maybe possibly even an hour. So just hang in there and keep stirring and try to put some grated soap in your lye solution if you have it. So I just like to watch other videos while I make soap. Reaching trace right now. Here we go. Trace. Okay, so I'm gonna just put the top on and then come back and stir every 15 minutes. This is how my soap looks after 15 minutes of sitting. You can see there's some separation. There's a see the liquid and everything. So just stir it back up. Okay. 
So you basically just stir like this every 15 minutes until it's it kind of it stays together and then it's kind of too hard to stir because it's going to get really solid. At that point, you can just stir every 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to check again in 15 minutes. Here's how it looks after the next 15 minute increment. It smells very, very soapy right now. So it's doing its thing. So I'm just going to stir it up again. It looks creamy right now. It's easy to stir. I think it maybe already went through the solid stage. Uh, sometimes it goes through a lot of stages and then sometimes it may look funny to you, but just wait, it, every 10 minutes or so it, it could look different. So don't be concerned if it looks like a rock or if it looks like it's separating, all pretty normal. Okay, so we're going to keep stirring until it starts to look clear, or translucent, not really clear. It should look like Vaseline, so we're just going to keep stirring. I'm going to stir every 30 minutes now. I know, based on my other liquid soaps, that it will take a few hours of cooking. Here is what my soap looks like now, after another half an hour. I'm just going to go and stir it some more. It looks like it's almost done. Oops, I'm getting steamy. I'm going to let it cook for 30 more minutes and then I'm going to test it and see if it's finished. Okay everyone, you see how it went from looking creamy to looking very translucent and Vaseline-like? Well that's great, that's normal. So what I want to show you now is how you test to see if it's done. I've taken one ounce of the soap paste to two ounces of water and I'm going to mix it and dissolve it. Now in case you're wondering, uh, how does this work? How do I know it's done? Why do I know that, that this is accurate, that this works? Well basically, liquid soaps are fully saponified, so there shouldn't be any uh, fatty acids left in the soap when it's finished. They should all be completely cooked, it should all be completely neutralized by the lye. So in order to test for that, it should completely dissolve in water. So I'm going to mix this up until it's completely dissolved and it's getting really bubbly. If, if the bubbles are bothering you, just get some alcohol spray and it'll take care of those bubbles for you. So, but anyway, I'm just going to mix it up and when it's completely dissolved, the way I like to test it is I like to get some something that I can read, put it over it, and then see if I can read through it. So I'll, it'll take me a minute or so to get this stirred up enough for that. Ooh, getting steam. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So you can see that it, there are a few chunks left, but that's okay. I can tell by the color change that enough has dissolved for me to test this. And I can already see this towel with really great detail, so I already know that it's good. But just to show you my little trick so that you can see that the clarity of the soap is good. All right, so I'm just gonna pour this back in here. It's finished, so I'm going to get my water going so I can get ready to dilute this some. So I have my water. I just put it on my kettle and boiled it. And right now I'm adding two tablespoons of citric acid. This is going to be neutralizing our soap because if you run this recipe through a lye calculator, you will find that we're using a lye excess, which is necessary in a potassium soap. Okay, so you can see this is hot. 
where did I put my glove? Here it is. So after this, the soap will be neutralized. Okay, I'm just gonna put my blender in here, blend it up a little bit, and try to get it to an even consistency. Okay, hi everyone. I just wanted to show you that it is clear underneath because I finally got it to settle enough. I just needed to wait a little bit longer um, because I, I had to actually run outside. There was a hawk circling my ducks. I had to put my ducks in a pen. So um, you can see that the soap is clear on the inside. And I'm going to add, I have a mixture here of lemon essential oil and lemongrass essential oil. This may make it cloudy. This is it. This is my concentrated dish soap and how I'm going to store it is I'm going to put it in some mason jars and I'm going to put a lid and ring around them so that I can store some away. And then what I have left over I'm going to pour into a little hand pump, a little um, plastic bottle with a pump. Okay guys, so here's my yield. I got, this is my, I reused the same container, which is why it looks all banged and beat up. So this used to be a hand sanitizer bottle that I've reused like dozens of times now for this um, soap. And you can see that it does get cloudy and that's because of the citrus essential oil that's in there, the lemon. So if you don't use citrus, you probably will get a more, a better clarity soap but it works great, so I will include the recipe in the uh, link below, so check that out, and I hope that you enjoyed my recipe for dish soap. I guess I should show you what it, how it works. I am so happy that I got this dish soap made because my husband has been just bugging me to make more. He likes to use this to clean the countertops. It gets everything out. It even gets... Um, this is the only soap that I've ever had that will get Sharpie marker out of off the counter and off, um, like I write on the glass mason jars what stuff is, and this is the only soap that will get it off, so. So it's really easy to use, you just clean and wash just like ordinary dish soap. It cuts through grease and everything else. Here I've got some dirty spaghetti stuff. It also works well in this little handheld thing. I put some in here because this is the little dispenser one. So it works great in this too. Well, I guess the water pressure is really low right now because the garden irrigation is on, but it does bubble very nicely. It's a very, very bubbly soap, which is why you don't use it in your dishwasher. You just use it in the sink. I just washed all my dishes. 